welcome to introduction to Retail Optics Module 2. Today I am very excited to have Aletia with me. She's going to be co-presenting with me. I'm an optometrist, she's an optical uh, dispenser, so you're going to have the best of both worlds. So don't be shy, you can throw us with those difficult questions, we will answer them for you. Great. So let's look at what we're going to do today. Today we're going to start with optics. Um, the previous module was uh, just, uh, you know, a brief summary of the optical industry, but now we're going to get into optics. We're going to discuss plus lenses. We're going to discuss minus lenses. We're going to talk about the optical power. And then we're going to discuss refractive index. So why is it important to know all of this? Understanding basic optics allows you to better understand the products available. You can uh, most probably get a price list or a product manual and they're going to have um, optical definitions and information in there and you need to be able to understand it. It also aids in building trust through communication and relationship with the customer. If the customer can sense that you understand your optics and you know what you're talking about, he will definitely um, take your advice, for example, when you recommend a product to him. And it helps you to understand product differentiation, why certain products need to be prescribed, why do you need to recommend certain products to certain patients. So that is very important. So the first thing we want to discuss is what is the definition of a lens? We are prescribing them in practice all the time, but what exactly is it? So a lens is a piece of transparent material with two polished surfaces used to bend light to form an optical image. We are going to build on this, um, on this definition, but for now, we're going to stay put with this. Okay, I want you to look at this sketch. This is a piece of a window taken out. You know in those sci-fi movies where the... Um, where the ninja comes with a laser cutter and he cuts a round shape out of the window. Now, this is one of those, those cuts viewed from the side. So you will see that the front surface and the back surface runs parallel to each other. So when that happens, that any light that enters from the front will go straight through and it will go out in a straight line on the back. So there's no changing in light. So if I shine a light from the front of this piece of window and I look at it from the back, then the light will look exactly the same whether I view it from the back of the window or from the front of the window because there's no bending of light happening there. Now Let's look at the scenario of a window. If I look through this window and I look at the mountain on the other side, then the mountain looks exactly the same whether I'm in the room or whether I'm outside of the room. And the reason for that is because the front surface and the back surface of the window runs parallel to each other. There's no bending of light happening. So the size of the mountain stays the same. But what happens now if I bend the front surface and the back surface? In this case, you will see that the front surface has been bent a lot more than the back surface. Then we get this shape of lens. When this happens, the light that enters the, the lens on the front surface will be bent and they will be bent towards each other and form an optical image at the back. So an optical image is formed where the two rays of light meet each other at the back of the lens. Okay. So now we can, we can look at the definition of a lens again and we can say 
A lens is a piece of transparent material with two polished surfaces with different curves that can be used to bend light to form an optical image. If I say different curves, that means the front surface and the back surface does not have the same curvature. And because of that, light is being bent. Okay. We get lenses in all different places. We get them in spectacles, binoculars, cameras, telescopes, microscopes, and also on in smart in your smartphone. There's a whole lot of lenses in the camera um, and built in in those devices. <clears throat> now, if you look at lenses in from a, a scientific point of view. I don't know if you remember in school, we spoke about convex and concave lenses. But in the optometry industry, we are always talking about a plus lens and a minus lens. So how do we represent these lenses in the optometry industry? Okay, the first image is a three-dimensional view of a lens but we cannot really see much from this. If we cut it in half, I can see that this picture is thin in the center and thick on the sides. So now I can see, okay, this is the shape of the lens. If I cut another lens in half, it might be thick in the center and thin on the edges. But it is very easy to just do a two dimensional drawing of her lens if you want to indicate the shape of the lens. Okay, so now we're going to look at the difference between a plus lens and a minus lens. You can see the one is convex and the other one is concave. So let's discuss a plus lens first. Now a plus lens is thick in the center and thin on the edges. Now, I'm going to give you an easy way to remember this. If you think about a pregnant woman, she is carrying a baby in a tummy, and it's going to be a plus one. So she's going to be herself plus one. And her tummy is thick. So she's thick in the center and thin on the edges. So this is a plus lens, and that's how you're going to remember it. The opposite is true for a minus lens. Then it's thick on the edges and thin on the center. So let's look at a plus lens in more detail. Again, thick in the center, thin on the edges. So why do you get this shape? The reason for that is because the front surface is steeper than the back surface. So it's curved more on the front than the back, and then you get this shape of lens. So whenever light is entering a plus lens, the light rays will be bent towards each other to form an optical image at the back of the lens. Now, we get different powers of plus lenses. Let's look at the plus one compared to a plus four. You will see that the plus one is thinner in the center than the plus four. So we can note that the stronger the lens, the thicker the plus lens will be in the center. The other thing that happens with a plus lens is called magnification. Now, that's not something that we want, unfortunately not, but it is something that we are getting. Sometimes an optometrist might want magnification for a low vision patient, but in most cases, it is just seen as a side effect. So a side effect you can compare to a tablet. You, for example, you get prescribed a certain pain tablet for a headache, but unfortunately, there's the side effect of making you dizzy or sleepy. 
We don't want that, but unfortunately it's happening. And the same with the plus lens. So a plus lens causes magnification, and that's not always what we want because it makes the patient's eyes look very big behind those lenses. And I'm going to discuss ways later of, of, of getting not getting rid of it completely, but by taking it away as much, as much as possible. So let's sum up the plus lens. A plus lens has magnification as a side effect. Magnification is not prescribed and there is ways to reduce it. Okay, but we'll get into that later. Now, so for example, this patient walks into your practice. He's standing in front of your um, table and you look at his glasses. He has not taken his glasses off his face at all, but you can see if you look through his lens, that his head looks bigger through the lens than normally. So you can see there's magnification happening there. And that you know that is a side effect of a plus lens. So you will be impressing this patient tremendously by knowing that he's wearing a plus lens in his spectacles without even taking it off his face. Can you understand why it's important to know what is going on in optics? People can trust your opinion much more. Now, the next thing we're going to discuss is a minus lens. I'm going to give over to Aletia for the minus lens. She's going to take over from you. Aletia, I'll switch the slides for you and you can talk to us. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So I will be discussing with you the minus lenses. So the opposite is true for a minus lens. A minus lens is thin in the center and thick at the edges. So you'll always notice that that's a big difference between a minus lens and a plus lens. The front curve or the front surface is usually flatter where it's steeper with a with plus lens and the back curve is steeper so you'll notice that the edges are usually quite thicker specifically in frames you'll notice that quite often where the uh, and the front curve is quite flat then when light is going through the lens and you from the front surface whether it's a torch or whatever you will always see that minus lenses bend the light away from the center um, the more the light is bent towards the, away from the center, the more optical power is in the lens. So in minus lenses, we get all obviously different powers. So the lower the power is, so for instance, a minus one will bend the light less than what a minus four, for instance, will. So that's a, that's a very good characteristic of a minus lens. Last, not, not, but not least, minus lenses always make the image smaller. So specifically when you look at a patient, you'll see that, but also through the lens. So you can see in the image, when you look through the uh, lens, there is magnification on the tree. Um, if the lens is not smaller, uh, if, the, if the image is not smaller, it's not a minus lens. Okay. So where you get magnification with plus lenses, you get minification on minus lenses. It's again, like Julian said earlier on, it's not something that's been prescribed, it's just how the lens works. So, and that's something that we can reduce um, with a few of the things she'll discuss with you guys a bit later. So if you look, if a patient is wearing a minus prescription uh, and you look at the side of the head, you'll always see that it, the eyes are minim minimized. So it will always look slightly smaller than what it looks without the spectacles. So if the patient takes off his specs, his eyes will be normal size, and when he puts it on the specs, they will be slightly smaller. Okay, so the quick facts between a plus lens and a minus lens. Plus lenses are thicker on the inside, minus lenses are thinner on the inside. Plus lenses makes the image look larger or bigger or magnification, where on a minus lens, it will always look smaller and there will be minification. Great.
Thank you so much. So now I'm going to ask you guys, um, you can maybe just write in the chat box. Um, this is a stapler without any lens in front of it. Now the top image, can any one of you tell me, is this a plus lens or a minus lens? Belinda, if you get a correct answer, just tell me. Okay. The chat box is, nothing's happening. Oh, there, minus. From, <laughs> Max. from where? The first one was Nareen Marx. Ah, oh, Nareen Marx. That's my practice. I just want to say Nareen Marx. She fell uh. under me. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the bottom one. <laughs> the bottom one obviously is a plus lens. Okay, so the bottom one is a plus lens, the top one a minus lens. Okay, now this looks like a science um, exam at school, but um, let's quickly go through this. If I ask you, this, this is a camera's zoom function there in the front, so it's made up of a lot of lenses. Um, so a typical question in this exam would be um, what lens is that? Is it a plus or a minus? And you can see this is a plus, a plus. Why? Because it's, it's thick in the center and thin on the sides. This one as well, thick in the center, thin on the sides. Thick in the center, thin on the sides. So that's your plus lenses. And the minus lenses are thin on the center and thick on the sides. You can see that. So this is a typical science question um, from school. Okay. So let's have a look at the optical power. Aletia. Cool. Thank you. Okay. The following is important to know because... Understanding what influences the power of lenses is important for product knowledge, like we all know. Customers are in interested in this information. Like we all know when customers are all asking all those tough questions because they look on the internet. And, um, and if you don't know, then you look like you haven't done your homework. <laughs> this also is building trust through communication and relationships because you want to look like you know what you're talking about when you're busy with your patient. And from our side, it helps you to speak the language of the optical industry. So, you know that. A person's weight is me measured in kilograms or in pounds. A distance between two cities is measured in kilometers or miles. But did you know that fo the focusing of the lens is measured in diopters? And the symbol for diopters is a D. Get into the habit of always writing a D after the power of the lens true story. But the optic is a measurement of how much bending of the light or focusing a lens can do. Like we showed you in those previous pictures of the plus and the minus lenses, bending more or less light. Um, and the more bending of the light, the higher the optic power. The power of a, in, of a lens increases or decreases by 0.25 diopter like a minus one, one to five, plus one, plus one to five, as the list goes on. So a 0 0.00 diopter is a plano or infinity. A plano lens uh, is not perfectly flat like a window. It still has a curve on the, on the, it still has a curvature on the front and, and the front and back is the same. Also because we need to fit the lenses into a frame and a frame isn't usually quite flat. So we need a slight curve on the lenses. The power of the lens is created by two factors. The different curves of the front and the back surface and the type of materials. And this is the same for plus and minus lenses. Okay, so... That I wanted to say, Julian, there you go. Yes, so, um, okay. I want you to look at these lenses. I've got a plus 2.25 diopter, the left side, and I've got a plus 3.75 diopter. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is that the thickness in the center for the plus 2.25 is not as thick as the plus 3.75. So the plus 3.75 is stronger than the 2.25 and you do get more bending of light. 
But this is not very nice for the patient wearing the plus 3.75 because he's got Coke bottles in his spectacles. He does not want to look like that. And he also does not want to look <clears throat> like someone with huge eyes behind those spectacles. The same with the minus lens. If you get a minus 2.25 and you compare it to a minus 4.25, you'll see the first thing you'll see is that the edge thickness for the minus 4.25 is much thicker than the minus 2.25. So this is very unsightful. The patient has very thick glasses. Um, and also the other thing you need to note is that there is more bending of light happening with the minus 4.25 than with the minus 2.25. And that, and that is needed because the patient's eyes are weaker. So he needs more bending of light form a clear image of what is looking at. Okay, so patients does not want to wear thick lenses. Sometimes you can't do anything about it, but there is something, um, some, some ways that we can manage, manage thickness. Um, they don't want thick lenses because it's heavy and they don't want thick lenses because cosmetically it does not look very good. So we know by increasing the thickness of the lens, we can increase the power. But is there another way of increasing the power of the lens without increasing the thickness? Um, now, the way that we do that is by the refractive index. Now, the refractive index is a number that is used to compare different types of lens materials. So understanding refractive index allows you to reduce thickness of lenses. The higher the refractive index of the lens, the thinner it will become. Okay, I want you to think of refractive index as a number that tells you how closely the molecules are um, compacted together. If you think about iron, it is heavy and it is dense and the molecules are very close to each other and it is strong so that something like that will have a high refractive index if you think of something like water the molecule molecules are not close to each other at all they are spaced out even so much that it becomes a liquid so it can move. It is, you can move through it because the molecules are not <clears throat> close to each other. And something like that will have a low refractive index. Now we can do the same with lenses for spectacles. We work with refractive indices in the optom industry from 1.4 to 1.9. So a 1.9 refractive index is much denser. It's a dense material and it is stronger. So it will bend the light much more than a 1.4 refractive index. So <clears throat> by changing the material of the lens, the lens has more power. Okay, um, this is one way of looking at it. But one, uh, another way of looking at it will be more common for you in the practice um, where you work. So you will be thinking the other way around. So you will have a patient with a specific prescription, let's say a minus four. You know we need a minus four, but the lenses is going to be a certain thickness in a 1.5 index. So if you want to make those lenses thinner, you're going to have to increase the refractive index. And we do that by pushing the molecules together so that it's thinner. And by pushing it together, we're making the material stronger. And therefore, it's going to bend the light the same way as the um, 1.5 index, but the lens is going to be thinner. Does that make sense? Any questions on refractive index? Nothing there. Okay. Let's have a look at the plus lens. So a plus lens is thick on the center, like a pregnant woman. We discussed that. Um, so by making, by increasing the refractive index, 
we will be making the lens thinner because we are pushing the molecules closer to each other. Okay, so in the optom industry, um, most of the time we work with a 1.5 refractive index. Most of your stock lenses will be a 1.5 index or a 1.56 index. Um, if we have patients that has a rimless frame or patients that has a nylon frame, we're going to go up to a 1.59 or a 1.6 index because that is a strong index. The, the molecules are closer together and it's strong. It cannot break or chip that easily. You can also use a 1.67 index, but from 1.6 up, it becomes brittle again so it um so it's not a good idea to put a 174 in a rimless always so we are working with 1.5 1.59 which is polycarbonate 1.6 1.67 1.74 and then 1.8 and 1.9 are glass lenses we don't use them that often but it's a specific glass then for interest sake i want you to think of a diamond a diamond has a lot of light bending happening on the inside and um, the reason for that is because of the refractive index we said remember now the higher the refractive index the more bending of light will take place so a diamond has a refractive index of 2.4 and that's why it shimmers so much. Much It's because of all the bending of light happening inside of a diamond. So whenever there's a slight curve in the diamond, you will get a lot of bending of light and it will shimmer. Okay, so by using high refractive index, um, we can get rid of those side effects. Remember we said the side effect for a plus lens is magnification. The side effect for a minus lens is magnification. Now, whenever we use a high refractive index, we can reduce that unwanted magnification and magnification that we get. Okay. So uh, a lot of labs, I know we do and practices and everyone has a table mat with different refractive indices and plus lenses and minus lenses comparing them so that you can show a visual picture to your patient to understand this. Now remember they don't have any background in optometry 99% um, of the time. So you're going to have to be able to um, explain this to them and um, the one that we use at um, BBJR is uh, one like this so you have different powers of lenses on the left side on the top side you have different refractive indices you get a 1.5 1.59 1 1.67 for example and then say for example your patient has a minus four lens then you, you can go to a minus four and you can show him what difference it will make in the thickness of the lens by increasing the refractive index if you don't give them visually something to look at they're not going to understand what you're saying. So let's do a quick review. Um, plus and minus lenses. Increasing the curve increases the power, but it also makes the lens thicker. Increasing the refractive index also increases the power, making the lens thinner and reducing the image size for a better cosmetic result for the customer. Mm -hmm.